I thank the UN Office of Counterterrorism for organizing today's briefing. We are also deeply appreciative of USG Voronkov and other speakers for their remarks. My congratulations as well to Ambassadors Bob Ray and Tariq Ladeb for their appointment as co-facilitators of the review process. Chair, the threat of terrorism is serious and real. Regrettably, despite best efforts aimed towards transnational cooperation, it continues to spread, particularly in the regions of Africa and Asia. These are worrying trends and need urgent reversal. To this end, let me make four points. One, the threat of terrorism can only be tackled through consistent and unified multilateral action by the international community. Those states which lack capacities to tackle the threat of terrorism should be assisted, while those which provide shelter to terrorists should be called out and held accountable for their deeds. Two, it is important that the global counterterrorism strategy should continue to enjoy the support of all member states. The current review resolution adopted in 2021 is relevant and balanced. Therefore, the upcoming review should be a technical update of this resolution, taking into account the activities and achievements of the United Nations and other important fora. Three, we need to keep divisive narratives at bay. We should accordingly refrain from the classification of terrorism. The usage of terms such as right wing or left wing or far right or far left are fraught with the misuse of them by Western interests. Rather, we should exert our energy on addressing more serious issues, such as the growing threat of terror financing, which has been further exacerbated by the use of new and emerging technologies by terrorists and terrorist groups. India had hosted the third No Money for Terror conference in November 2022. We have offered to host the permanent secretariat for the conference in Delhi as one of the concrete outcomes of that event. In October 2022, India had hosted the special meeting of the Counter-Terrorism Committee, which had adopted the Delhi Declaration on countering the use of new and emerging technologies, highlighting not only the threat, but paving the way for a futuristic roadmap for the CTC to help member states address this threat holistically. Four, it is important to protect the secular nature of the strategy. India strongly condemns all kinds of terrorist attacks, irrespective of religion, belief, culture, race, or ethnicity. In the same way, we also condemn terrorist attacks motivated by Islamophobia, Christianophobia, anti-Semitism, anti-Sikh, anti-Buddhist, anti-Hindu prejudices. The seventh review took into account the first three kinds of attacks while failing to address the rest. A more sagacious approach would be to keep this reference broad, abandoning thereby a list-based approach in the upcoming review. Chair, as far as India is concerned, we have never hesitated from walking the talk in the effort to fight back the terrorist scourge. In recent years, India has contributed more than US dollars 2 million to the UN Office of Counterterrorism in support of its global programs to counter financing of terrorism, as well as stemming terrorist travels. Going forward, we also reiterate our support to provide more financial resources to UNOCT from the regular UN budget. I will conclude by quoting Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, and I quote, even a single act of terrorism is one too many, even a single life lost is one too many, unquote. With this conviction, India is committed to eradicating terrorism entirely and will not rest until the goal is achieved. Thank you.